a lot of excitement in this beautiful, beautiful hall, the Balmania, the beautiful venue. So much of excitement here in Bolton this evening. And you know what? The quiz did it for all of us, mashallah. But I see the sisters did much better than the brothers in terms of, you're saying no way? No, they did. Always, yes it is. Subhanallah, I don't know if it's because their fingers work quicker or it's because they actually know more, subhanallah. Nonetheless, well done to everyone. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created humankind, just try for a moment to imagine a globe or a world with no body in it, no one, no human being in it. Allah had created the earth, Allah created the skies, whatever is between them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, not on earth. He was created in a place known as the garden. The garden translates as Jannah. Which Jannah exactly it was? There is a big discussion of the scholars and many of them say it's not Jannatul Khuld, which means it's not the paradise we're going to go to that is eternal because it would have been eternal anyway. They say it is a special Jannah that Allah had created for this particular purpose of testing Adam alayhi salam. So what happened is Allah Almighty knew what his plan was. He wanted human beings to come on earth and he wanted them all to be related to one another. Amazing. If I were to tell you, some of you are more closely related to me than others, but all of you are related, not just to me, but to one another. It's just that you don't know the exact grandfather who was the same person, but we were all and we are all related. So Allah wanted to do something amazing and Allah knows why. So Allah created the souls. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided he's going to make one body and from that body he will create a spouse and from the two of them it will result in a multitude of men and women to disperse over the whole globe as you and I witness to today. So listen to the verse. Ya ayyuha nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa Allah says, O oh people, be conscious of the one who is in supreme control of your existence, the one who made you, the one who provides for you, your Rabb. Be conscious of him. He is the one, what did he do? Who created you from a single soul, created from it its spouse, and from the two of them caused a multitude of men and women to be throughout the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this for a reason he knew and he knows but something very sad and very difficult very different happened because when Allah created Adam he was lonely when he was lonely he asked Allah to remove the loneliness why was he lonely he was lonely because he was the only one of his species imagine if you live in a home all alone may Allah make it easy for you it's not so easy when you're staying all alone and you've got no one with you what happens you feel lonely and you say oh Allah take my loneliness away ask those who are trying to get married and they can't get married may Allah bless you with a spouse that will be the coolness of your eyes say Amin. I always say why are the married guys saying Amin so loudly Aish, we've got a problem may Allah bless us Amin. but nonetheless on a more serious note, my brothers and sisters, it's important to realize loneliness is something that Allah did not create us for. Unfortunately, we have to endure it, but Allah wants us to find a spouse, to actively look for one, whether it is simply nikah or whatever it is. We have brother Shan here this evening, mashallah. And no matter what it is, we must make an effort. Our family members, our sisters, our brothers, whoever it is, try to match them, try to introduce someone to them, try to see, to get married, try to look into it. And you know what I say to the people always? I say, don't look for certain qualities when you know you don't have the qualities that that type of a person would be looking for. 
I hope you understood that. It means I want a person who is praying. I want him to be handsome. I want him to be wealthy. I want him to be, you know, dressed in a, in a smart way. I want to be, him to be living within a 50 mile radius of me. I want him to be of this and I want him to whatever. Guess what? That guy is there. I can show you who he is. But the problem is he's not looking for someone like you. That's the problem. Do you get what I'm saying? So what's the solution? Make yourself a person whom the person whom you would be looking for would be looking for. Simple. May Allah make it easy. May Allah grant us all ease. So going back to Adam alayhi salam, he was lonely. He says, oh Allah, take away my loneliness. Oh Allah, take away my loneliness. Allah Almighty one day blessed him with something, something unique. What was it? Hawa. Eve, may peace be upon her. And there we had Adam and Hawa. Narrations speak about what exactly happened at that moment. There are so many narrations and actually Judaism, Islam and Christianity share some of these narrations in the sense that they agree to a certain extent with some of the things that happened and they disagree with some of the details. Nonetheless, what we have is sufficient for us. So he asks, who are you? She says, I am Hawa. You've been created. She says, I've been created to give you company and to give you peace and so on. Allahu Akbar, amazing. They were then living so happily, so beautifully, but shaitan kept coming to them and he kept trying something. When he knew that Allah does not like something, he kept on encouraging them to do it. And who did Allah tell the instruction to? He told it to Adam alayhi salam to say, this is paradise. This is Jannah. This is the garden. You can do whatever you want here. There is nothing prohibited. Nothing that you need to stay away from. You can do whatever you wish. There is only one tree that I don't want you to go close to. Don't eat from its fruit. Don't eat from its fruit. Adam alayhi salam knew this. Shaitan kept telling him, you know what? You want to live long. What was the discussion about? Death was not even spoken about at that point. You want to live forever. Do you want to have more than what you actually have? If you want to have more and he had everything, then you have to do something. And he kept repeating it, kept repeating it, kept repeating. When repetition happens, people begin to believe what is being said, even though it's a lie. Like you notice the news right now about Gaza and what's happening in Lebanon. The most immoral army in the world keeps talking about how moral they are. Moral, moral. They've been saying it from before. The reason why they say it is because they've planned immorality. They need to con the world into believing by repetition alone that we are moral. And they will get a standing ovation where they go. Moral, very moral and so on. They keep telling, they keep repeating the same thing. This is our land. This is our land. It was ours. It's biblical and so on. It will keep happening. They will keep saying that. The reason is that repetition is what will brainwash the people of the globe. Shaitan's plan from the very beginning, his plan is repeat, keep on saying the same thing over and over again. Why do you think Allah has instructed us to call for the prayer five times a day and to repeat those words when you're about to pray again? Subhanallah. It could have just been said once, you guys have to pray five times a day, but there needs to be a call and said, look, to be honest, you know, two times, someone said three times. It's, it's, it's a fact. We know we're supposed to be praying five times a day. If you are weak, admit it that I'm weak, but aim at the five. Subhanallah, aim there. Oh Allah, strengthen me. Make dua. Oh Allah, grant me the strength to do the right thing. Oh Allah, I'm weak. Gosh, I missed the Fajr again. Oh, I missed Asr again. It must make you sad. That's a sign of the mercy of Allah. Because without that sadness, you're not going to go into the right direction at all. Please, when you're doing something displeasing to Allah, admit it that this is displeasing. Within yourself, admit it at least. Don't justify it. Today, we're living in an age of justification. People will come and say, I don't need to do this because I don't find a verse of the Quran saying you have to pray five times a day. It just says pray. So I pray. Oh, now there is no hope for you because unless you turn holistically, Allah wants you to turn one day, but because you're justifying that you don't have to pray. And where did you get that from? You're saying, well, not five times a day because where in the Quran, my brother, there is a whole sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu If you don't believe in it, you have not believed in the Quran because the Quran tells you to adopt the sunnah. There we go. The Quran tells you to get the explanation from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for nearly everything. 
So don't just drop out. Come in. Admit it. Say, look, oh Allah, I'm weak. Strengthen me. And when you make a dua to Allah to strengthen you, work hard. I'll give you an example. You can't say, oh Allah, strengthen me to get up for Fajr. And then you haven't set an alarm. Or your alarm rings, you snooze it and say, well, Allah will wake me up. I made dua. And then you see the sun rising and say, inshallah, I'll be up just now. And then the sun rises and you got to go to work. You say, well, Allah didn't get me up for Fajr, but I'm up for work. That's nonsense. No way. If you're making dua to Allah, oh Allah, strengthen me to fulfill my Fajr. You must definitely make an effort and push yourself off that bed. Wallahi, when you get regular with the Fajr and four months pass, inshallah, if you have not missed Fajr or you've hardly ever missed it at that particular time or during that time, you get to a point where time of Fajr, your eye opens before your alarm. Wallahi, I promise you. I'm sure many of us have that experience. Your eye just opens and there's five minutes remaining for the alarm. And subhanallah, why? Because you got yourself used to something Allah created you in a way that your body will acknowledge it. Subhanallah. So Adam alayhi salam fell. He sought forgiveness. He was forgiven. He went onto the earth. He made this dua. Allah forgave him and Allah said, Hadihi sunnatukum. This is your, in fact, the angels had already told him, this is the way things should be done. When you falter, you admit it and you turn to Allah and you seek forgiveness and don't do that which is bad. Now don't do that which is bad is an instruction. Man has done a lot of bad and keeps on doing bad and all of us have errors and mistakes. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Kullu bani adama khatta. You know the meaning of khatta, someone who makes not just mistakes often, but someone who does the wrong thing many times. The hadith says all human beings are khatta. And the best of those who make mistakes so many times or have committed so many sins are those who commit are those who engage in repentance so many times. You committed sin a hundred times, you sought forgiveness a thousand times. What happened? I'm not encouraging you to do something wrong, but I'm telling you we're living at a time and generally in a space where a lot of negativity is happening. So much pressure on our boys, our girls, our men, our women to do the wrong thing. So easy to transgress, but to do the right thing is a little bit difficult. It's becoming more and more difficult. That's from the hadith. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, spoke about it because it's from Allah. Allah knew what's going to happen here in the 21st century and what will happen even later. Allah knew that you're going to walk out on the street and you're going to watch so many things. You've got to be the most polite, the most genuine, the most sincere believer. Because you have to respect everyone around and you have to at the same time navigate your faith in the midst of the environment that you're living in. So subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, while you're walking, try to be conscious and wherever you've done something wrong, remember Allah is merciful, He knows. The hadith says, there will come a time, al qabidu ala dinihi kal qabidi ala jamr. There will come a time when a person trying to hold fast on his faith will be similar to one who's holding a red hot coal. What's a red hot coal? Red hot coal, you pick it up, it, you drop it. You pick it up, it burns, you drop it the other side. You pick it up again and you've got to keep picking it up. That's what you've got to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So we're living in an age where it's not so easy. Don't lie to yourself and don't fool yourself. It's difficult out there. Your children will probably find it more difficult than you. And their children will find it even more difficult. And that's the reason why today we are here at Balmania. Mashallah, what a beautiful place. Why did we gather? We gathered, mashallah, we, we give everyone the opportunity to reach out to the struggling brothers and sisters across the globe. Mashallah, that's a good thing. But more than that, to be able to touch the hearts to connect with Allah even if it is step by step connect with Allah you will never regret nobody has ever regretted their connection with Allah nobody I am witnessing on social media and by the way I am trusting that we will use social media to do the right thing because there is so much of benefit you can achieve from social media when it's used in the right way so much of it so and you can also use it for the wrong things and slide and destroy your life. 
So you have to be careful. If you are going to use it, make sure you do a proper job. When I watch some things on social media, I'm noticing even the non-Muslims coming in and enjoying Islamic teachings. And we born Muslims at times, or those who've been Muslim for a long time, sometimes we don't appreciate the deen of Allah and how it has brought us to such a beautiful level if we followed it. There is a sister asking chat GPT questions, you might have seen that, about Islam, about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, about the truth and falsehood, and she gets clear cut answers. For your information, she entered the fold of Islam. And subhanallah, everyone got to see and watch and witness. Who is that? A person who was not a Muslim not too long ago. And you and I? How many years are you Muslim? Most of those here in this venue or at this venue were born Muslim. Do you appreciate your faith? Minimum acknowledge I'm weak. Inshallah, we're going to strengthen ourselves. Inshallah, we're going to appreciate. We have a favor of Allah. It reminds me of an example. One, we were asking kids to say, give an example of how you think the ummah is treating Islam. You know what one child says? Uh, well, uh, uh, almost teen, maybe 12 years old. He says, it's like a person who has a Rolls Royce. Listen to a child's example, right? A person who has a Rolls Royce, but still wants to drive their Prius. I'm thinking, what did you just say? A person has a Rolls Royce and still wants to drive a Prius. I said, but maybe they want to be humble. Maybe. He says, no, the Prius doesn't work. I said, okay. The Prius doesn't work. Okay. What, does, what is the child trying to say? You have something so valuable, but you still want to be stuck in the rut. Basically, that's the message of the child. You have a Rolls Royce. Roll, man. Come on, roll on, my brother. Let's see it, man. Subhanallah. Did you notice? Two expensive things start with R-O-L. What else starts with R-O-L that's valuable? Rolex. The brothers know it straight away, man. Mashallah. So they call it, that's why they say, look at him rolling because he's got two rollings. One is a Rolex and one is a Rolls Royce, right? May Allah forgive us. We want to roll into Jannah, inshallah. May Allah Almighty bless all of us. My brothers and sisters, enjoy being a Muslim. I promise you. Enjoy the fact that you're a Muslim. And you need to be proud of the fact you're a Muslim. What does Islam do to you? It helps you build your relation with Allah. It disciplines you and builds the best character. Nobody can come close to the character of a believer. No one. If Islam teaches something, trust me, it is beneficial. And if there is anything truly beneficial out there, Islam has taught it. They didn't, there's nothing forgotten. So that's why be a good Muslim. Islam teaches you to develop your link with Allah and it teaches you to develop yourself because you're going to have a relation with the rest of the creatures of Allah. So how I talk, how I walk, my temperament, control, make sure you nurture yourself, push yourself. Many of us have a temper. Your temper will not go away. You have to work on it. You have to work hard on it. You have bad habits. You have to work very hard to eradicate those bad habits. The people with good character, most of the time, they didn't just become with good character without an effort. They made an effort. I started watching my mouth. I stopped swearing. Today, the F word. The F word is said like salt and pepper in food by people who are, when you look at them, they look like they do salah five times a day and might even be getting up for tahajjud. They'll make videos and say, you know, I went to the F town and I came back, the F this and F that. Every little thing is an F. Good people are using the word as though there's nothing wrong with it. That word, the problem I have with it is the angels register it on your book of deeds. I don't need the word. I'm a Muslim, I'm going to utter beautiful, amazing words. The angels are writing the words. I must be happy to say they're going to write some lovely words from to this day onwards. The angels, imagine your angels are writing, wallahi. مَا يَلْفِضُ مِن قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Nobody can ever utter a word except that there is someone taking a record of it. The angels are writing it down. So it's not going to happen. Without an effort, make an effort. Tell yourself, the angels are watching me. They are writing down my words. Why should I have F and F and F and so on? And in some people, it's a culture. It's become, no, I'm a Muslim. I can change that. If your friends have it, don't use those words. Use good words. The angels are writing you. Use amazing words. Become a person who's so pleasant that when someone sees you, they are happy to meet you and talk to you because the way you talk itself is healing. It's healing. Some people, you meet them, you're a happy person, you become depressed, right? And some people you're depressed, you meet them and you become happy. Why? It's because of 
the interaction, the experience, it be, it's an experience to meet people. Subhanallah, sometimes it's, it's a beautiful experience. You meet someone and they give you so much importance. Mashallah, my brother, how are you? I'm a Muslim, I care for you. If my emotions or my, the way I talk to you can empower you, I've earned a reward, I've got good deeds, that might be my ticket to paradise and guess what? I was thankful to Allah for giving me the opportunity to do that. I said it in yesterday's speech. An uncle comes to me as I'm walking out of the masjid, it was in London. And he says, you know, he, he gave me quite a bit of, you know, whatever he wanted to say. You, why don't you speak about Palestine and why don't you talk about this and who are you fearing and why don't you mention the enemy and why, whatever and he kept on going on and on and on and you know it's in full view of the public my brother I love you we all care for Palestine we all know who the criminals are we all know whatever we've done a lot whatever we could we know what we've said we know what we've spoken we know we've called it a genocide we know every we know a lot and we've done more than your imagination and I'm not doing it for you or anyone we're doing it for Allah I know all of this in my mind but I, he's an elderly man. I let him have his peace and I stopped. And there were, there were people walking with me like almost like bodyguards, you know. I said, no, 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 move away. This man, let's listen to what he has to say, elderly man. And he said his peace. I said, uncle, I love you so much. Allah, do you really think we don't care? Do you trust me? If you don't trust me, don't follow me, don't listen to me. Kick me out of your own vocab, it's okay. But you trust me? If you trust me, trust the fact that I am doing whatever I can. Maybe not exactly how you want it, but I know what I'm doing. And I know things you don't know. And I have done things you wouldn't imagine I would have done. So, uncle, I want to give you a big hug because I love you. If anything happened to you, I would be the first one to defend you. He just looked at me, I said, and he gave me such a big hug. Such a big hug. It was such a warm experience. We had to run away after that. But I promise you, if I was given a while, I would have gone to his place for tea. Why? He's a member of the Ummah. A few bad words he uttered in public. I did say to him, Uncle, I don't think I deserve a public admonishing of in this whole place here, you know. But we started laughing and we were okay and we walked out. Because we members of the Ummah, we are all frustrated about what's going on in Palestine and in Lebanon. And these, we are frustrated. But trust me, in that frustration, don't start fighting each other. Because that's the whole aim of the enemy. They will... Make sure you believe that others are not doing anything. When all of us are doing whatever we can, different capacities, you may never know. People say, why don't you talk about Palestine? Wallahi, I've spoken about it so many times, including today. Subhanallah. You don't follow, do you? So you only hear what people say. Or you don't know what they've deleted from the posts that I've posted. And when they've banned me and how long they've banned me for. It's not... I don't need to see something from you to know that you are a member of the Ummah, you are doing something. I, I believe it without seeing it. There is no member of the Ummah that doesn't care for the rest of the Ummah. No way. We have differences. We will have so many differences. But trust me, the good thing is, deep down, we do care. May Allah Almighty help us. Don't allow shaitan to snatch away the care that you have within your heart simply because you think, oh, this person belongs to that sect and this person belongs to that sect. And so, you know, when we go out to help, Allah's given us an example through the life of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu and his words to say, a man entered paradise by assisting a dog in quenching its thirst. Was the dog from your sect? Was the dog from your tribe, from your race? Why was it a dog? To show you that if he earned paradise through the dog, what would you earn through a human being? Subhanallah. That's the message. I don't care what, where you are and what. I will even go as far as assisting the non-Muslims when they're in need. We will do it. Won't we? Haven't we done it already? We will go and help. We are not doing it because we think they deserve our help. We are doing it because Allah told us to help. That's it. I don't care whether you like me or you don't like me. I will help you. It's okay. That's the attitude of a believer. You can hate me, but the day you need me, I will stop and try and save your life. I will help you change your tire, puncture, even if you're swearing me while I'm doing it. So what? Man has a problem. We would not like to help people who don't like us. Try to get one above that. It's okay. You don't like me. I'm not helping you because of you. I'm helping you because Allah says, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin. Allah loves those who do good. My good deed is for Allah, not for you. I'm going to do good. So when Allah sends Adam alayhi salam here, he started having children. And when he started having children, subhanallah, 
There was a special system with which the children ended up getting married from different wombs. One narration states that there were 20, 20 times when Hawa alayhi salam gave birth. Each time she had a boy and a girl. So the law at the time, the rule at the time was anyone born in one womb was not allowed to marry each other. They were considered the siblings. And the others were allowed to marry for the first generation and then it changed. So each time the Sharia or the law changed. Right at the beginning, you were allowed to marry a person who was not born in the same womb as you. So you had at least another 18 people you could get married to. Meaning 18 divided by 2 because boys and girls, 9. Subhanallah. And then it carried on from there and it became further and further. And what happened? They were brothers. They started fighting. The same shaitan came in. They were brothers. Same shaitan came in. He made them go to war. He made them fight each other. And as the generations went, they lost. They lost it. They lost the whole reality of the fact that they are all brothers in one. So what did Allah do? In a nutshell, he kept sending prophets to remind them. Every prophet reminded them to fulfill the rights of family and relatives. It doesn't mean the others must not be fulfilled, but family and relatives have a greater right. Everyone. Allah tells us in the Quran so many times to be conscious of your family members. Why? Because it's not easy. You will have problems. You will have issues with your brother, with your sister, with your in-laws, with whoever else, with your brother's in-laws, with your sister's in-laws. Whatever it might be, you will have issues. That is just Allah trying to look at you, whether giving you an opportunity actually to shine. How are you going to shine? Solve the problem. Try to solve. What is it about? It's okay. Let's solve it. Let's sit and talk. Let's sit again and talk. Let's sit 10 times and talk and try and resolve it. Give and take. It's okay. Sometimes I have said, I'm sorry, when I know that I was not wrong. Guess what? It works wonders. Try it. I don't mean give up your rights, but something that maybe is very dear to you, you might want to stand up a bit for justice because yes, justice is something that Islam teaches. But when it's your own family and it's a thing that's forgivable, forgive it, leave it. Lord, you know what? You have bigger fish to fry. You have bigger issues. And I want to tell you something very serious tonight. Ask those who know when you carry burdens and you have hate and you have so much of dirt in your heart, you will never ever lead a happy life. You will be unwell, you will be sick and ill, your mind will get even more filled with hurt and hate and dirt and you will not be content at all because your heart is not ready to receive contentment. That's why. When you have a heart that is clean and good, you might be trampled a little bit here and there, but trust me, you'll be content. You have a contentment. Why? You have a connection with Allah and you know, I'm just going to do my best. So do not allow your heart to be filled with hate and jealousy and ill feeling. You will burn. You will burn and your contentment will be thrown out of the window. If you want to taste contentment, have a good heart. Be happy for people. You have a business. Mashallah, you made a million. Guess what? A guy right next door opened the same business. What am I going to do? If you get, if you are enraged, you will only suffer in your rage. You might, sisters, wallahi, I enjoyed this evening. I see beautiful faces. I really loved every moment of mine here in Bolton. And wallahi, once again, I'd like to thank brother Amir Khan and brother Muhammad and the others for such a splendid evening. Abdullah Aid has really put together something amazing. And I want to thank all of you for having donated Perhaps more than a hundred thousand this evening. Allah knows best what the figure was. Brother Rahim was stuck in bad weather with the trains all cancelled today. But mashallah, he made it. And when he made it, he came and he addressed us. I knew it was going to be a little bit late. I know there is school tomorrow. But nonetheless, one day in the whole year is not a bad idea. May Allah Almighty bless you all. I love you all.